We're going to talk about atoms, ions, and isotopes. Now, at any point, if you don't understand the summary of these three topics that I'm talking about, then you are more than welcome to uh, watch subsequent videos to help enhance your understanding of atoms, ions, and isotopes separately. Let's talk about atoms. Atoms, we know the structure of the atoms. We studied how people have constructed, constructed the structure of the atoms after various experiments. Uh, but what we need to take home from it is that atoms and how it's related to the periodic table is that the atoms are arranged by increasing atomic number in the periodic table. So that means the atom is determined by the, period, the, by the proton number or atomic number. We know that an atom has subatomic particles of protons, neutrons, and electrons. Now, for an atom, an atom is said to be electrically neutral. That means the number of protons must always equal to the, num to the number of electrons. All right? Now, what happens if we change the number of protons to a particular atom? For example, the sun, yes, the sun that gives us the sunshine, is mainly made of hydrogen, okay? Now, what happens in the sun is that there are nuclear reactions going on. Now, nuclear reactions are very high energy reactions, all right, because it's really, really hard to get into the nucleus, which consists of protons and uh, neutrons. But the sun has enough energy to do, to do that. And so what happens in the sun is that it takes a hydrogen atom and hydrogen has one proton, and another hydrogen atom, which also has one proton, and they take the one proton from, they take the one hydrogen and another hydrogen, and the sun fuses the two together to make a new substance with two protons. And that completely makes a new atom. All right, and what's that new atom? Let's take a look at a periodic table. Ah. Helium. Helium has two protons. That means a nuclear reaction is, happens in the sun where two hydrogen atoms are made into new helium atoms. And when we study the chemical composition of the sun, that's exactly what we get. Lots of hydrogen and helium as well. And other he heavier elements which we are not going to care about at this point in time. All right? So, when you change the proton number of a particular atom, you are making a new element or a new atom. Let's take a look at hydrogen. We already know that hydrogen has one proton. And hydrogen will always have one proton, no matter what. If you take or remove the electrons, that thing will still be a hydrogen. If you add or remove neutrons, that thing will still be a hydrogen. The same goes for lithium. What's the proton number of lithium? Take a look at the periodic table and it says three. So if we add or remove electrons or neutrons, that thing will still be lithium. But if we add protons to lithium, we will now make beryllium. And if we remove protons from lithium, what we will have, end up having is helium again. All right? What about carbon? Carbon will always have six protons. What about chlorine? Chlorine will always have 17 protons. That's it. So far, we've talked about atoms. And atoms have, are electrically neutral, as we have mentioned before. Okay? That means it has the same number of protons and the same number of electrons. It turns out that we can add or remove electrons quite easily because it doesn't require a lot of energy. All right? Because it's out there. So when we add or remove electrons to an atom, we are making 
what we call a charged atom. A charged atom happens when we add or remove electrons. We've said that. And that charged atom is now called an ion. An ion. All right? An ion is simply a charged atom. That's a new word you got to learn. There are two types of ions. There's a positive ion, also called a cation. Not cation, as some of you may read this as. All right? Positive ions happens when we remove electrons. When you remove electrons, you, are, you will end up having more protons than electrons because protons have a positive charge and electrons have a negative charge. And when you have more positive to the negative, you will have a positively charged ion called a cation. The second type of ion are called negative ion, ions, and they're called anions, not anions, as some of you may read this as. Anions happen when we add electrons to atoms. When we add electrons to atoms, what you end up having is that you have more electrons, more negative charged particles compared to protons, which are the positively, positively charged subatomic particles. All right. When you have more electrons to protons, that new ion that you've made is now an anion. So let's take, make an example of how you get an ion. Let's take sodium. Sodium has 11 protons and 11 electrons. That's nice and easy, right? It so happens is that when sodium undergoes chemical reaction, it will like to remove or give away one electron. So that means the number of protons now for sodium, the new sodium ion, is 11 protons and 10 electrons. When you have one more positive charge of protons compared to electrons, your subtotal charge for of that sodium ion is now plus one positive or plus and you will write that in a chemical symbol as Na plus the plus is superscript at the top right corner top right corner of that chemical symbol right well let's take a look at chlorine chlorine has 17 protons and 17 electrons well it turns out that chlorine likes to gain another electron it likes to add electrons. So what happens is that this chlorine is now charged and you made an ion called chloride. Now what you end up having is that you have 17 protons but 18 electrons. One more electrons than protons. So that means the new charge of that chloride that you made is minus one or just minus. And you write it as CL to the negative sign, all right? The negative sign will be at the top right corner of the chemical symbol. Let's take a look at, at, at other ions. Ca, calcium. Calcium has 20 protons, and when you remove two electrons, you ended up with 18 electrons. That new calcium ion is now written as Ca2+. What about nitrogen? Nitrogen has seven protons and seven electrons. But when you add three electrons to nitrogen, it becomes nitride, a new ion. And because there's three more electrons than there are protons, nitride, nitride now carries a three negative charge. All right? That means you write it as N3 to the minus. Let's finally look at isotopes. Now remember, I've always mentioned that atoms is determined by the number of protons, by the atomic or proton number. It turns out in nature, there are atoms of the same type or kind, which is like hydrogen, but hydrogen comes in different mass, all right? And we've also studied that the mass of an atom is determined by the number of protons and the number of electrons, I mean, number of neutrons. When we must maintain the same number of protons, 
the only other variable that we can change is the number of neutrons. So that's what isotopes are. It's a new word for meaning the same atom, the same kind of atom like hydrogen atoms, but with different mass. All right, so that means the neutrons are different. The number of neutrons are different. Let's take a look at our favorite element here, hydrogen. Hydrogen one. Hydrogen has a mass of one, and it also has an atomic number of one. That means the mass of hydrogen is determined by that one proton. Right? Cool. But take a look at the mass of hydrogen being one and the mass of helium. That's four. That means there's some numbers between one and four. And it turns out there are other types of hydrogen. And these isotopes of hydrogen are called heavy hydrogens. Hydrogens also come in them atomic mass of two. Whoa! So one of this mass is determined by the number of protons. That means there's always one proton. That means there's another number left that must be the mass, that must be part of the mass of the heavy hydrogen. And because the number of protons must remain the same, that means the other subatomic particles that make up the mass of hydrogen 2 must be neutron. So that means hydrogen 2 has one proton and one neutron to make it hydrogen 2 or heavy hydrogen. It turns out there's another heavier hydrogen than hydrogen 2. That's hydrogen 3. Hydrogen 3 has an atomic mass of 3. One of its atomic mass is, is already counted in 4 because it has only one proton. That means there's two more mass numbers that we need to somehow find. Right? And it so happens that hydrogen 3 has two neutrons. That means two neutrons plus one proton will give an a, a atomic mass of 3. Alright? So here we have the symbol for hydrogen 1 with the mass of 1. Hydrogen 2 Hydrogen 2 with a mass of 2 and hydrogen 3 with a mass of 3. All having one proton but different number of neutrons. This is the isotopes for hydrogen. There are other isotopes on this planet, lots of it. Another common one is carbon. Carbon 12 is a very common element. And carbon 12 has 6 protons and 6 neutrons. That's right. 12 minus 6 protons, you're left with 6. That means that 6 must come from neutrons. High carbon-13 is another uh, el carbon element that we use to carbon date fossil bones. And it turns out carbon-13 still has 6 protons, but now it has 7 neutrons. All right? 13 minus 6 means it equals to 7, so it must have 7 neutrons. And finally, carbon-14, a radioactive carbon, has six uh, protons and eight neutrons.